Hi everyone. Now, in this part, we are going to discuss a topic called biochemical activities of microbes in milk. Yes, the biochemical activities or the biochemical reactions that are occurring in the milk due to the microorganisms is going to be discussed in this part. So, as we all know that milk is the normal secretion of mammary glands of mammals and this milk is going to be considered as an ideal food for the consumption uh, irrespective of uh, any age. Why it is going to be considered as an ideal food means because of its high nutrient value, containing of bodybuilding proteins and energy giving sugars like lactose and uh, milk fat isn't it minerals and vitamins so because of having such uh, nutrient value uh, along with us the microorganisms also allows to have such nutritious food so now when this milk is going to be uh, withstand under conditions that permit microbial growth the raw milk of a good sanitary quality rapidly uh, undergo a series of biochemical changes and uh, those all series of biochemical changes are due to a group of microorganisms isn't it so what are those group of microorganisms such as acid forming microbes gas forming microbes ropey forming microbes proteolytic microbes and lipolytic microbes so that's how uh, there are going to be of several microbes which are involved in all these biochemical changes and we will discuss each of these type in detail okay so let's move it the first one is the acid forming microbes so look at this picture because of the acid forming bacteria the milk is going to have this uh, uh, curling uh, property acid forming microbes or certain bacteria which bring about natural fermentation of the milk. The most common type is the lactic acid bacteria which takes place the soaring of milk under natural conditions and milk of good sanitary quality which kept under conditions that allow the growth of the streptococcus species and lactococcus species develops a clean and sour flower. And uh, when coming to this streptococcus species itself, lactose uh, it is going to ferment the lactose quickly but do not produce a high concentration of lactic acid. So it is also going to involve in the fermentation but the lactobacillus is the one which is going to be giving rise to the acid. And another bacteria called as micropococcus species uh, produce small amount of acid from lactose fermentation and so the milk. Then E. coli and Enterobacter aerogenes also ferment uh, lactose to uh, give rise to the end products like acids, gases and some neutral compounds. And these uh, are going to be that means all these uh, fermentation process are going to be considered as undesirable. Why we are considering it as undesirable means because it is going to produce carbon dioxide, hydrogen and an unpleasant flower. So that's why the fermentation or the acid production that are occurring by this E. coli and Enterobacter in the milk are going to be considered as undesirable. And then the microbacterium lactam is also reported as a milk uh, uh, fermenter okay and it ferments the milk and gives rise to lactose to lactic acid and other end products so these are all going to be considered as acid forming microbes that are occurring in the milk and then come into what are the second type uh, is going to be the gas forming microbes so what are these gas forming microbes so there are certain coliform bacteria okay like clostridium uh, butyricum which ferment lactose to acids accompanied with uh, accumulation of some gases the gas being uh, a mixture of carbon dioxide and hydrogen. Uh, example, as I told you, is a costridium botrychum, isn't it? Or botrychum. 
and this uh, Clostridium vitricum is producing a large amount of carbon dioxide whereas coliform bacteria is also involved in such type of the gas forming microbes and they will produce mostly hydrogen gas so Clostridium is going to produce a more amount of carbon dioxide whereas your uh, E. coli bacteria is going to be or coliform bacteria is mainly involved in the production of H2 so then yeast are also involved in the ferment uh, producing of gas forming uh, thing so those are going to be Torula cremoris, Candida pseudotropicalis and Torulopsis uh, speric, uh, sperica are majorly reported in the milk which are producing uh, carbon dioxide in more amount rather than the hydrogen so this is how the gas production is going to be occurring because of these microbes in the milk then coming to the third type ropey forming microbes so ropey forming ropey fermentation okay the conversion of a liquid to viscous material by the action of microbes is called as ropey fermentation so here if you observe generally the milk is going to be of a uh, liquid in condition but if you observe here it is going to be of thing uh, seen as some ropey nature so this kind of the thing is going to be called as ropey fermentation and these microorganisms synthesize a viscous polysaccharide material that forms a slime layer or a capsule around these uh, cells that means around uh, the bacterial cells so examples are going to be alkaligens, viscolactis, enterobacter aerogenous and then we are also having streptococcus cremoris and some species of micrococus are responsible for this ropey fermentation along with these two we are having uh, still other examples also like micrococcus and streptococcus cremoris and ropey milk is not uh, del uh, deleterious to health that means it won't damage to the health but is usually objectionable to its appearance and is frequent and one more important and this kind of the ropey milk is going to be frequently used as a culture medium okay so that's all about the ropey forming microbes the third type and then moving to the next type proteolytic microbes so here uh, in the proteolytic microbes the uh, these microbes or microorganism hydrolyze milk protein and increase the what it is going to increase obviously ph isn't it so here Proteolysis may be preceded by the coagulation of uh, the casein uh, by the enzyme called as renin or renin enzyme and elaborated by bacteria resulting in the formation of soluble form of casein. So here the correlation is goagulum or this kind of the thing is going to be mainly advantageous in the manufacture of cheese and cheese, isn't it? Next, the proteolysis uh, degrades the casein to peptides and further into amino acids and this is going to give rise to uh, the bitter taste of the milk so this uh, whole thing is going to be of very damaging to the milk but this proteolysis with the help of the renin and the acid forming bacteria is going to be used in the cheese manufacture but here the proteolysis of casein degrades the peptides and further into amino acids and which are responsible for alkaline reaction and bitter taste of milk. So examples of this kind of uh, proteolytic microbes are going to be of uh, Bacillus subtilis, Bacillus cereus, Pseudomonas putrefaciens, Streptococcus liquefaciens, etc. Then moving to the last type of uh, uh, microbe which are showing the biochemical activity in the milk is going to be lipolytic microbes. So lipolytic is mainly considered with the lipids. So we know that milk also contains the fats. So some microbes uh, produce an enzyme called as lipase, which is slip. Uh, that means it is going to split the milk fat to glycerol and fatty acids. And some of these fatty acids have a sharp flower, which causes imparting rancid flower. So rancidity is going to occur and uh, some sort of order to milk and lipolytic microorganisms in the milk or the bacteria 
uh, especially Pseudomonas fluorescens, Acromobacter lipolytica. And coming to the east, we can have the Candida lipolytica, and coming to the mouse, Penicillium species, and Zeotrichum candida. So these are the microorganisms which are causing the lipolysis or lipolytic activity in the um, milk. So this is how it is going to look when it is going to have the lipolytic microbes present in the milk. So we have seen the major five types of the uh, biochemical changes uh, due to different types of the microbes like uh, acid form, acid forming microbes, then gas forming microbes, then ropey forming microbes, proteolytic microbes and lip lipolytic microbes. So here are the two milk packets which are saying with one another hey he you seem to sword now so this milk is saying don't come you are not supposed to have because you are soren so you are not uh, fit for consuming okay so this is just a cartoon and then uh, the other type of the biochemical activities just i want to add a note on it okay so let's have these are all the biochemical activities and these are all the microorganisms which are involved in causing this biochemical activity and the conditions that are uh, provided so the first one as we have already discussed is gas production coliform spore forming bacilli and clostridium species are involved and that is occurring because of the homo and hetero fermentation producing lactic butyric propionic and higher acids with the release of carbon dioxide then proteolysis this also we had seen so proteus yeast micrococcus aeromenas Flavobacterium, Pseudomonas, Serratia, these are the few examples which are involved in the proteolysis of milk. And these are all the things that are happening. That is acid proteolysis with the production of acid. Alkaline proteolysis, that means our proteins are going to be degraded into peptides. Peptides are going to be converted into the amino acids, isn't it? So then a production of alkalis. And then sweet curdling caused by renin, so cheese preparation. Slow proteolysis with the production of mercantiles and HVS amines and residual proteolysis caused by heat stable proteinized enzyme. So, then coming to the rancidity, so here Clostridium lipolyticum, Bacillus, Acromobacter species are involved. So, rancidity that is nothing but your lipolytic activity or uh, uh, lipolysis, the fat degradation producing rancid order and off taste. Then coming to the alkaline formation, that is because of the microorganisms called Pseudomonas fluorescens, alkaligens viscolactis. And here comes the formation of urea, carbonates, making the milk alkaline and so on. And then coming to the next one, ropiness. So this ropiness or uh, ropey fermentation that we discussed is because of the two things. One is a bacteria and then one is a non-bacterial. The bacteria includes the lactobacillus, streptococci, micrococcus, alkaligens and here the milk proteins and sugars are broke down producing stringiness and ropey strands. We have seen, isn't it? So here is a thing, ropiness. And then changes uh, non-bacterial, it's all about mycotic infections of animals, okay? That, because of that also you are going to have this ropey fermentation of the milk. And then coming to the next change in flavor. So the milk flower, though it is not going to have any appearance, but still it can change the flower. So that is going to be of a sour or acid flower, okay, which is going to be of clean, sharp, aromatic. The examples of Streptococcus lactis, coliforms, leuconostoc and streptococci. And what is the conditions that are going to occur? Acid production is occurring. Volatile fatty acids are produced aromatic production is occurring and then moving to the next one changes in flavor only a bitter flower that means uh, you are going to be of bitter in taste so examples of coliforms asperginus yeast are going to be the best examples of causing the bitter flavor in milk and coming to the conditions proteolysis and lipolysis occurs then musty flavor is of uh, actinomycetes microorganism is responsible and here also proteolysis occurs and the next one is a burnt or caramel flower and this uh, kind of condition is going to be because of streptococcus lactis uh, variety maltigens and conditions are going to be cooked flower or 
for overheated milk so these are all the things that are happening in the flower then coming to the color changes of the milk you are having a different colors which looks very uh, good but it is not going to be desirable so here uh, blue milk is because of the pseudomonas syncani and streptococcus lactis and geotrichum the condition where you are going to observe is a blue color of the milk and then yellow milk so here is another microorganism that is again synzans and flower bacterium are going to be mainly involved in causing of uh, yellow color to the milk and which is going to be lipolysis and proteolysis or the reasons for yellowing of milk then coming to the red milk and that means the milk is going to be converted into the red color and that is because of uh, these bacteria like Cerveceria, Micrococcus, Brevi bacterium and yeast and sometimes it can also be in pink or red colonies like Pseudomonas putrificans and you can observe obviously by the activity of these microbes in the milk they will change the milk into red color or pink or red color then la next one is a brown milk and that means the color of the milk will be brown and this is mainly because of the pseudomonas fluorescence and this is going to be of uh, because of putrefication of milk and by enzymatic oxidation of tyrosine the amino acid that is present in the milk is going to give rise to this one and then another type of uh, biochemical activity is tromy fermentation and this tromy fermentation is mainly because of clostridium perforangeus and the conditions that are prevailing this one is higher acids alkalis produced resulting in stringiness so these are the few examples that we have already had seen this is how the stromy fermentation is going to occur that i told you so you can observe here okay and this is the rancidity of the milk and the slime mold growth on the milk so that's all we will finish our uh, biochemical activities of microbes in milk